there's a sustainability movement that's starting nationally. And this very bright woman named Majora Carter, she's a, an, an environmental activist from the Bronx. And she said, you shouldn't have to move to live in a better neighborhood. And I believe that. So you make your own neighborhood better. Now, I'd rather build a house here. I build houses on the side. That's but true. guess what? The housing market has crashed. Yeah. We have a lot of vacant land in Cleveland. So what do you do with it in the short term? I think you try to figure out ways to create wealth. So the goal was, what can I create that will create some jobs, that will uh, create some food, and jumpstart something in the inner city? And grapes, I mean, if I would have done bell peppers, you probably wouldn't be here with this camera <laughs> viewing me because uh, the grapes are the highest yield per acre of any crop. That's Well, when I built my house, I used to, there was a lot, vacant lot next door, and I used to joke that I was going to put a vineyard in, and you know, something upscale, and uh, I used to joke about it. Well, then they did the Reimagining Cleveland project, where they were going to fund 58 projects, so I threw, I made the application. I didn't think I would get the project, I didn't think I would get funding. Seriously? In fact, I almost, almost didn't, except wow. for one guy who was very insistent that they consider me, because people were saying on the committee, what does he know about a vineyard? Yeah, right, right. And so I kind of told him I knew something, which I didn't, but I, I'm a quick study. <laughs> and you can learn. Oh, I'm a, and I got great advisors. That exactly. I, I got more advisors than I need on this project. You know, everybody, every other person I talk to said they know how to grow grapes. That's been the great part. It's built community. I know a hundred more people in and outside of my neighborhood than I knew last year because they've stopped. I invite them to come work. One woman was walking her dog. She lives two blocks away. I'd never seen her before. She took her dog home, come back with her gloves. She pitched in. She helped plant some plants. Wow. I made a new friend. And, and, and we're repairing the social fabric of the community, which is critically important. Weeds. We burned off the weeds, we tilled the land, and then what I, the other leg of it is, other than sustainability and repurposing inner city land, I used formerly incarcerated guys. In fact, the guys were still incarcerated. Okay. They were living in a halfway house, a half of, about a half a mile away, Oriana House, okay. and they were doing, they, they, part of their rehabilitation was to find projects to volunteer with. They have to do community service. They right? don't have to, because a lot of them don't, to be really? honest. No, they don't really have to. They can. But these guys really got into it. They learned a lot of skills, and some of them I'm still in contact with. Right. And one of the nicest part, one guy, he's out here, and he's, his son came walking past. He hadn't seen his son in years. And so his son come back. So I had a father and son uh, working on the project. The land still belongs in the land bank. I don't really want to own the land. Right. Doesn't have to pay taxes on it. That's right. So let the city own it, and you find a land bank lot, which there's literally about 3,000 acres, I think, in Cleveland. That's right. And they're creating more all the time because when these houses go into foreclosure, you tear them down, and then you know you got a vacant lot. You tear the house down. You put a glass slanted roof. You leave the basement. You grow the crops in the basement. What it does is it extends the growing season. It gives you a controlled environment to go crops in, and you put a glass slanted roof so you catch the sunlight. Now you can lock the door. Nobody can come along and take your crops, and you can grow longer period of time. There's 294 plants. Half of them are traumanet. It's a white grape from upstate New York, right. and it's cold hardy. And the other half is a red grape, a Frontrenac, from Minnesota. Both of them were developed to be able to withstand Cleveland temperatures. I was going to put in some Chardonnay or something until the expert uh, from the Ohio State Extension Service said, we better go with something that's a little bit safer for you since you're new at it. Who isn't giving me advice? <laughs> but actually, there's a viniculturalist from Ohio State Extension Service, and then my friend John Carlo Caliclia, who was born on a, uh, 
a vineyard in Italy. He's been doing this all of his life. So I have some great advisors. John Carlo wanted to do the Chardonnay, but the experts said, no, we'll do something that's cold hardy. I put them in in 2010. 2011, this year, I will pinch them off. As the grapes come in, you cut them off, and then that, all of that energy goes back into the root and into the, uh, the vine to make it stronger. Then in 2013, you take a look and see how they look. If they look strong enough, then you got enough grapes. If you wait till 2014, you will have an abundance. I'll have an abundance of grapes. Then I'll find somebody to press them and make wine out of them. But when you think about it, uh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola is selling vinegar for $30 a bottle. That's true. That's so true. I may get high class vinegar. I might, what if I win an award with my wine? The price goes up. So I mean, the sky's the limit. I, I don't, we have no, and nobody, until you actually make the wine, nobody knows how good or bad the wine's going to be.